Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike from MoboxGraphics.com and in this micro interaction video, we are going to be doing kind of like a phone picker. So picking an iPhone, iPhone 8, iPhone 10, or you know, Android, whatever. So um, it's just gonna be a pretty simple little, um, little animation of the different phones and it's just gonna be really simple shape layers and stuff like that. But um, hopefully it looks really cool and really like it's actually a web interface. So. Um, let's just go ahead and jump right into After Effects here where I have a 16 by 1200, um, 59.94 uh, frames uh, at 10 seconds. 10 seconds should be long enough. I could always extend it later. So one thing I suppose I should bring in first is actually my mouse pointer, which if you are a Patreon supporter, you'll be able to download this project file and it will come with the mouse pointer. If I could find it. These are the types of things that should be done beforehand, which we're not. All right, just dragging that into the composition. Hopefully we don't have to do very much. Just gonna open it up just to see what I got. And I think I'm going to delete the background layer, which is fine. Turn on motion blur, as well as continuously rasterize, and now we're good. So I'm just gonna drag this into my composition here. And I'm going to reduce the size to about that big. Add the motion blur, continually rasterize again, and then come here and search for drop shadow. Just gonna add that on the layer decrease the distance to maybe three, increase the opacity, or um, I'm sorry, the softness, maybe the opacity just a little bit. I think maybe that's a little too bright. I like actually when the drop shadow is aimed down, straight down. So I think I'm pretty happy with that as my mouse cursor. I'm, and I'm just gonna move that over off to the corner there so I don't have to see it for a sec. So I'm just gonna create the outline of a phone um, and I'm gonna need the rounded rectangle tool because the corners of the phone are rectangled as well as some of the screens are now um, uh, rounded. So um, I'm just gonna create a layer. It doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to make sure the stroke is zero and the fill is black. Um, I could actually change the radius of this curve as a key as a keyframe so I don't have to really worry too much about uh, how it is right now. So I'm going to open up the contents here of this rectangle, the rectangle path. I'm going to reduce the roundness to zero and I'm going to uncheck this size box and make this 1920 by 1080. So that's the standard size of a screen. I could actually make this 1080 by 1920. Um, that's the standard size of a screen, so I'm just going to shrink that down so it fits my composition. I could have done the math to see what the size needed to be at this composition size, but I didn't think it really mattered. Um, I'm just going to rename this layer to screen, and I'm going to duplicate it, Control D. So this one I'm gonna rename to body, and I'm gonna put it below the screen, and open up the contents and change the size again. So I'm gonna make it taller and a little bit wider. So if you hold control while you're dragging this, it actually gives you a little bit more control. Um, I can now make the screen white, which um, if your background's not white, you could actually set this. I'll show you with what I mean. Um, if your background's not white, you could set the screen as a mat on the body by changing this, I think, to alpha inverted. Um, so if your background's not white, you can do that. Um, my background's white, so I don't really need to worry, but um, I'm gonna reopen this body here and kind of make this look more like an iPhone. So I don't have the exact proportions. Um, if you wanna make yours perfect, you can, but uh, I'm just gonna kind of make it until it kind of resembles an iPhone, which that looks pretty close. Um, now I'm just gonna create an ellipse um, or a circle holding shift and just create an ellipse. So to center up the anchor point, you can hit control and double tap the home 
um, or the, I'm um, sorry, the uh, pan behind tool and it will set up the anchor point. And I'm just gonna center up this right in the center as well as centering up both the screen and the body and everything to the center of the composition by using the align tool. If you don't have the align tool, you can go to Windows Align. Um, I think the screen and the body also, I'm gonna align vertically. So that looks fine. I think this home button's a little small, so I'm just gonna scale this up a tad. Which I think that looks about right, and I'm just gonna center it up. If you hold shift, it by the way, it maintains it on the X or Y axis. Um, so that makes it a little bit easier to control as well. So that looks good. I think it's a little stumpy, so I'm just gonna increase the body height a tad, which I think that's a little bit closer to reality. And I think that looks good. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the pen tool to create the speaker port, which is totally not technical. I'm just going to increase the stroke just a little bit there and center up the anchor point. If I get the pan behind tool, I could center up the anchor point into the center of the object. If it doesn't want to pin, or again, I could just hold control and double tap the home button and it or the pan behind tool and it will center it up. And now I'm just going to center it up. So it appears that something is not perfectly centered. Let me just make sure all of these things are centered properly. All right, for some reason they were off by a little bit. Um, so now I'm gonna center that up. Wow, that's so strange. For some reason it doesn't seem to wanna be centering up using the align tool. Um, anyways, um, now I'm just going to rename this to speaker. I'm going to rename this to button. And I think now we're ready for business. So um, obviously this is not perfect, but it's pretty close. So uh, I guess I could just start animating this real simply. So let's see, we can go from an iPhone 8 to an iPhone 10 to let's say a Samsung Galaxy S8. So to do that, I'm going to need to set a couple keyframes here. I'm going to change the size and roundness. By the way, this is size, not scale. Just so you know, you don't want this to be scale because if it's scale, these corners will not scale properly. When it's size, you could mess with the size um, and the radius stays the same. So roundness, size, um, screen, I'm going to want to do the same thing. And the button, I'm gonna do position, so P on the keyboard and scale, S on the keyboard. And then the speaker, I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard as well and uh, uncheck that box. So that way I could scale it um, sideways and it won't scale in the Y direction. So selecting all these layers now, just pressing U on the keyboard, it brings up all my keyframes. So we're gonna go from an iPhone to an iPhone 10. So the speaker grill goes from zero to one or from 100 to zero. So that's going to go away. Um, the button is going to scale to zero, but I also want it to kind of um, move with the screen. So I'm just going to kind of move the position down slightly. So it'll kind of scale down that way. Um, just going to bounce back to those keyframes by hitting J. I think the ultimate size of the phone, I'm just going to leave. Um, but I will actually change the size of the screen. So I'm going to fill this whole thing out, making sure the distance there and there, the thickness is about the same. So it's, you know, not going to be super surgical, but it's going to be pretty close. And then I'm just going to increase the roundness until it looks about right as well. So that looks pretty good. I think it's a little thin on the top. Let's see. That's the body, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna control Z that. I think that looks a little bit more natural, but it still looks like the top is a little short. Let me just make sure, ah, oh, that's a problem. For some reason the screen was not in the perfect center. The anchor points were not set, so that was my fault. Uh, let me just bounce back here to make sure all these things are now in the right area. Um, yeah, for some reason I did not uh, set up the anchor points on those shapes, so you're definitely going to want to do that. So 
So I'm definitely going to want this position to go down a little bit more. And I think the body is actually pretty fine right now. Um, I would say maybe the roundness is a little extreme. I think that looks probably better. Now I just need to get this gap up here, which I have to pull up a picture of the iPhone X because I haven't seen one in a while um, to remember exactly what the front looks like. So let's take a look at this. So it's pretty close to just being squared off. So I think I'm just going to square it off. So let's see, I'm just going to use this tool again to create another uh, rounded circle. And it starts about there and it goes, and I'd say that's about maybe right there. Um, I don't need a stroke, I, but I do need a fill. And the fill I want to be black as well. So that obviously is not perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to create a rectangle tool under this same shape. And let's see if I can't get that to be perfect. I think it's going to be challenging. Um, let's see. Also what I could do, if I actually duplicate this rectangle tool, so control D, I could open this up and decrease the roundness and then change the scale and then move it up. So that's probably a little bit too big, but since I did this all in one shape, I can move the anchor point to the top. By the way, this is an external script um, from mountmograph.com. It does cost money, but this just helps me move the anchor point. So you could just easily press Y on the keyboard and drag the anchor point up. But on this shape, I could actually scale this up and down and I could scale it uh, in the X and Y until it looks about right. So what I think I'm actually going to do is I'm going to just take a snapshot of the iPhone 10 just so I know that I'm doing this um, to scale. So I'm just downloading it right now and I'm going to place it in my project folder. I'm just gonna drag this up here and scale it down. Put transparency T on the keyboard. So we're pretty good on the radius actually. Um, but the bezels are much thicker, so we could actually adjust that. I'm not going to make them exactly that large. I think that that's kind of extreme. But I'm just going to line that up and I'm just going to trace over this. or I can move this shape. And I think I can change the roundness on this. Just like that. And let's see, one of these shapes I can, um, I can reduce the size. So 
So that is actually pretty close to what it actually should look like. So I'm just going to delete that iPhone layer now, um, the external image. I'm sorry that took so long, but um, you know, it is what it is. I'm just going to move the anchor point to the top. And yeah. So I obviously don't need that notch in the beginning. Let's get it J on the keyboard and hit scale. I'm going to just use the scale tool. Um, it probably is not the best tool for this, but I'm going to use it anyway. Um, because it's behind the black, it could just kind of scale it up just a little bit. And that's fine. Or what I could do is I could stagger this a little bit. Um, make the scale really extreme. And then kind of again stagger this. So when I add smoothing to this, using this tool, um, you could take a look and see what that looks like in the uh, So it's a little bit slow, so I'm just going to select all these, hold Alt, and drag this in. Of course, you can be using the um, the graph editor, but it's really hard for me to match all of these to the same graph, so I use the tool. So I think in retrospect, I think I'm just going to just make it all the same. So now I'm just going to match these keyframes or set new keyframes and then I'm going to have this turn it into a um, a Samsung Galaxy S8. So this shape could obviously scale now to zero because we don't need that. Um, the body, well first of all the screen is actually um, let's see, 19, 1920 by 1080. So that would be, cause it's, it's two by, it's two by one, I believe. So that would be, um, that would be 2160 by night or by 1080. So that would be 1080 by 2160. So that's actually the size of that, but the bezels are extremely thin on the side. I'm going to tighten those up and the bezels are also pretty tight on the top. Um, in addition, the roundness is different. So the phone's a little bit square and the screen is a little bit square as well. But that's pretty dang close to what it actually looks like. The button again could stay at zero. So I'm just going to set those keyframes. The speaker though, um, I do want the speaker grill to exist. So I'm going to just do that, but um, it looks like we're going to need a position keyframe for this speaker. So I will set position keyframes um, back here where they need it to be prior. And that was just off slightly. So I'm just going to now set another position keyframe. Again, these are still frames, so it's not actually moving, um, but uh, it will be moving now. So again, I'm just going to add the same motion. I think that looks good. So I do not like the motion of this, which I'm going to rename to iPhone X worst feature. <laughs> so it actually scales both in the X and Y direction, which I do not want. So I'm actually Oh, I'm sorry, I did this wrong. Let's see, so that's 100. So I'm actually gonna set this back to 100 and this to zero. And then also set a position keyframe and do the exact same thing that I did prior. Just set those positions and I'm bouncing between these keyframes by hitting J and K. But I'm just gonna keep that stuck to the top of the phone. And then again, select all these, make sure they have the same motion. So that line for some reason, is a slightly different color, so it's slightly off white. So I'm just gonna make sure that's white. And 
Wow, for some reason I didn't change this name to iPhone X worst feature. By the way, these are a little bit slower because I think that they're a little bit more fun. Um, so let's see, I actually want this speaker to, to bounce up. And I still want it to be at that point, so I'm just going to copy and paste that keyframe. And now with all of these now, I'm just going to press U on the keyboard to make sure I bring up all of my keyframes. I'm going to reset them by dropping to the back so they're back to the original keyframes. And then I'm now going to set my final motion I want. Okay, so let's see now. Um, I'm just gonna create a layer new null object so I could parent all of these to it. So that way when I move the null object, I and I could scale the null object down by pressing S on the keyboard and moving it over. So 45,000 minutes later, we're now ready to start doing some of the micro interactions. Um, one of those, which is the only one of course, um, iPhone, which that all looks good. Gonna, for some reason that was um, off. Just gonna center up the anchor point, make sure it's centered, that looks good. I'm just gonna control D, duplicate that. Duplicate that again. You know, I could even name this the Pixel XL, which maybe I should because the Pixel XL is actually, um, or the Pixel 2 XL. Um, no real reason, it just basically looks exactly the same as this, so. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna do that. And I actually think the Galaxy S8 is a little bit taller and a little bit thinner, so that actually works out. Um, I'm gonna bring up my proportional grid so I can line these up. And I think I want them to be kind of in between this line here, which is two over. So I can move this now to the center there. And I can just scale these down by pressing S on the keyboard scaling them down, and now I'm just going to move them into place. Center it up. And I'm not being super precise in that respect, so I think that it's, but I think that it's fine. If I wanted to be more precise, I could open this grid up to full grid and say, okay, so, First, I'm gonna center up all those anchor points, which they're fine. And I'm gonna say this is gonna be one, two, three, four, five. By the way, I could even move these over directly onto the line. Say one, two, three, four, one. I can't count. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so that's why they're, that, that way they're super even. Okay. Just gonna get rid of my grids. And I will now need to uh, change these transparencies. So I'm gonna use keyframes for this, T on the keyboard. I'm gonna bring this down to 20. And then up to 100. Whoa, I don't know what the heck I just did. Um, let, me, let me not do that. Select all these. <laughs> Type 100 and add smoothing to these as well. Um, that's extraordinarily fast, so I'm just going to extend that out a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, so I restarted kind of, uh, I went on a long path that, that ended in nothingness, but only um, disaster and despair, the likes the world had never seen before. Um, that's not true. It just didn't look good. Um, so I, I backed up. So this is what my project looks like right now. I just moved my keyframes over, but aside from that, I didn't change any of the animations. So what I need to do here is, is mess with the transparency, I think, of the body. So let me see what happens when I do that. Uh, the notch is still visible. So um, I will be pre-composing this later. Um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll just start at this point. So let's see. I'm also gonna delete this cursor animation because I don't really think that I'm ready to start moving the cursor quite yet. Um, so iPhone 8, the color should be, so I'm gonna actually add a fill to this because I do wanna mess with the color. Or I could just mess with the opacity, which I think I'll probably do, do instead, um, which I actually already have opacity keyframes, which is great. So I actually want this to be 100 because we start on the iPhone on the iPhone 8 and uh, let's see so when the cursor moves to these other ones I want them to uh, kind of maybe pop up slightly so I'm just gonna mess with the animations here hit us on the keyboard set a keyframe and then press U on the keyboard to see all of my keyframes. I'm gonna also, I'm just gonna delete all of the opacity keyframes. I'll remake them later. Um, so let's see, I want this to increase in size slightly and increase in, uh, in opacity. But at the same time, I'm gonna decrease the opacity of, of that. So, what the heck is this? Oh, that's my mouse click. So I'm gonna move this out of the way as well. I don't need that yet. So this person hovers over iPhone X. So I'm gonna start with the mouse movement. Set a position keyframe down here. Just like that, add some smoothing and I'll show you what the graph looks like. Looks just like that. Let's take a look. Okay. So, add some smoothing here. But also the mouse does hover over the XL slightly. So we're going to want to uh, We're going to want to make the XL pop up as well. So it goes up right there. Set an opacity keyframe, set a scale keyframe, press U on the keyboard. And so we jumped up to scale 82.8, which to make my life easier, I'm just gonna name that 83. So that jumps up. And then it jumps down. Expand that out slightly. And add some smoothing to that. I'll show you what all of these graphs look like towards the end. So I could just drag these in by holding Alt. In fact, I think that these could even be going faster. I think my only gripe would be the size, 
which I think 68 is probably too large to, z or um, I'm sorry, um, 83 is probably too large. I would say maybe 78 is probably better, or maybe even 75. I think, um, I think 83 is too large. So this doesn't need to decrease in color until my click comes in, which I'm just gonna move these keyframes back over. But I'm gonna need to move this down now to where the button clicks. Right there. And that's when that that opacity goes down to zero. So he clicks it, or she, and then likely will move the mouse over Just like that. So let's take a look. I'm trying to save time by not having the mouse ever go over another group. So when that clicks, that's when the iPhone shall change. Just gonna move these keyframes all over. Gonna have this delayed slightly. Extend this out. So I want that to be the the main animation. You know what? I may not even have the mouse move over, in fact. I might make it now. Have the mouse move over now down to the pixel. In which all of these junk, junkyard animations <laughs> need to now be moved over or copied and pasted. So let's see, um, iPhone X actually, once it was clicked, should have reduced in size back down to its original size of 68. So now we're at this point over the iPhone or over the pixel and I'm just going to copy these keyframes and paste them onto the pixel. Move the move the position of this.
right over there. Make that happen almost instantaneously because it's invisible. And I'll copy and paste these keyframes over. But then also, um, let's see, because you could see it actually moving. So I'm just going to set the opacity here to zero. Some reason that wasn't lined up properly in the way that you would expect. Just like that. But again, as we hover over this object, we're going to want this opacity to go from 100. In fact, I could just copy these and paste them onto that. So once that is clicked, we can now move these keyframes over. Just like that. Now, one last thing I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna have this mouse cursor. This is gonna be a little bit tricky, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Set a keyframe for position. I'm gonna have it move up to the iPhone 8. And re-click it. but it's gonna go over the iPhone X. So this is another nightmare. I'm gonna extend the composition size actually just briefly here to um, 13 seconds, just so I have enough room. Feel a little bit more comfortable, not as claustrophobic. I'm gonna double click this and set the composition time to this to also 13 seconds so I have enough room on my cursor time. Drag that out. For some reason, somehow I made all of these layers invisible. Okay. So my cursor goes over the iPhone X, meaning I need all of these beautiful animations to be pasted onto the X, but it's so fast that it actually goes down almost instantaneously. So I could actually just zoom in to make, just make sure that this is a a good amount that these are even or they look close enough
copy now these animations up to the iPhone 8. You on the keyboard so I could see them all. And I'll copy all this stuff. Paste it there. But now change the position. Up and over. Which once that happens, Pixel XL transparency should drop. So I can just paste that on there. Just like that. And now my cursor can go home to where it came from by just copying and pasting that keyframe, smoothing out those animations. However, man, it's going to cross some paths on the way. Um, let me make it not cross paths by making that janky or something. Or maybe, here's something clever. I just make this fly off screen. Why are you doing this to me, cursor? I'm not trying, I just want to move you. Off screen. So you don't cross any paths and get in any way. Um, so I can actually make that. Because uh, it's still got to cross the path, which is annoying because I already set that animation. But I will extend that out. So it Why do I feel like the pixel is just Always larger, even though it's not. But anyways, guys, I think that that's it. I think that's basically done. Um, let me just show you what this looks like. I'll probably make it look a little... Oh, holy crap. I totally forgot one thing. When it turns into an iPhone, it needs a transition. God dang it. Okay. Just copy these keyframes here. Whoa, don't want to do that. Um, also, those are not evenly spaced. Let me just make those look at least a little bit evenly spaced. So I could just copy and paste these keyframes. Control C, Control V. Make that evenly spaced. And turn this back into a regular old iPhone. Now I can do what I just did, copy and paste, copy and paste a thousand times, or I could use this tool, again from mountmograph.com and just hit clone and it does the same thing. I guess my only problem would be the position of that uh, button is a little low now, but I could just increase it just like that. And I'll ever know the difference. Now I just need to add some smoothing. I'm just gonna add a global smoothing to this whole thing so they're all the same again. Again, you do that um, by just selecting them all using this tool. Or you could sit here for 12,000 hours and make all the graphs look the same, which quite frankly, if you could do that, you're a hero. But remember, I did stagger these slightly off. 
Okay. I think that that's it. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Check out the other micro interactions on this channel and subscribe for new videos. Anyways, guys, if you want to download the project file, be sure to go to patreon.com slash mobox. You can download the project file at the $3 level. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.